Oh, she's so. Oh, shit, the window's open. Oh, we gotta do this again. Oh, if I leave that open, there's just gonna be buses pulling out all sorts. Here we are, guys. Welcome back to the channel. Another video, but not in the hallway, and a video with substance. Are we proud of me? Because I'm proud of me. So today's video was inspired a little bit by the recent podcast from Talking Elite Fitness where they had Don Fall on, who's the CEO of CrossFit. I was listening to it in the car on my long Friday commute that I normally do. Something kind of popped into my brain as I was listening to them talk CrossFit media and like could it be doing more for affiliates. And it definitely got me thinking about that a little bit. In the last, let's say, 18 months to two years, I've been doing a lot more CrossFit coaching and therefore getting involved with affiliates a lot more. I coach at two affiliates now and the owners of each of those affiliates I consider to be friends of mine. I want to see their businesses succeed. In looking things up to kind of prep myself a little bit for this video, I delved a little bit into CrossFit's main site and tried to look at it through the lens of someone who had heard a little bit about CrossFit, didn't know an awful lot about what it was but was potentially looking to become a member of an affiliate. I kind of thought, I was looking at all the pages and clicking through things. I didn't feel particularly inspired by the website. I didn't necessarily start this video to talk about .com and what .com could be doing for affiliates, but I wanted to address it because it was addressed in the conversation itself where, where CrossFit are looking to put more time and energy into trying to essentially funnel people who are interested in CrossFit and interested in becoming an affiliate member, making it a little bit easier for that person to find their affiliate. In all of that, it would be nice to see them incorporate some sort of filtering system. CrossFit affiliates are run independently, so lots of CrossFit affiliates will provide slightly different services, slightly different things. Manchester, for example, has multiple affiliates in the area and all of them are extremely different. Finding a way to give people that type of information through .com would be great, although in practice I'm not quite sure how exactly you would do that. The main thoughts that I kind of had for this video were kind of based around two, the two CrossFit's YouTube channels. So across both of them, I believe it was Sean that brought this point up, there are close to 3 million subscribers. Now that is a huge audience to market not only themselves, their brand, the sport, but also the affiliates and what the affiliates can provide for somebody who's potentially interested in joining. Looking at the content across both of them myself, again, trying to look at it through the lens of somebody who has just heard about CrossFit, is maybe thinking about trying it. The games channel is definitely much more appealing. It's giving you some sort of timeline across the season, and what might be happening in the sporting season. However, the regular CrossFit channel is definitely a little bit lacking in inspiration. A lot of the content on there just seems to be very generic demonstration videos, which I'm not saying aren't necessary, by the way. A silent demonstration video with some text overlay, but he just stone face demonstrating the movement isn't necessarily inspiring people to come in and try CrossFit out. It's definitely a wildly more appealing way of including that type of content. Drawing on my experience as an affiliate coach for a minute, my coaching business, my personal coaching business in general, people are very aware when they approach me that CrossFit is the thing that I do. It's a conversation starter. Typically how that conversation starts tends to be, I've seen that Netflix documentary. That's not really happening anymore. This is just a general observation. This is just me pointing out my personal experiences. Less people in general, on the whole, month to month, walking into the gyms and saying, I've seen this on the internet and I was really interested in hearing more about it. I can't speak for other affiliates, but the majority of the lead generation that happens with two affiliates that I do work in tends to be through social media now. So it's not like we aren't getting the inquiries, it's just that they're coming through different channels now. Those channels have little to nothing to do with CrossFit themselves. I am not saying that they should be completely not responsible for that stuff. You wanna run a successful business, you need to put the effort in. You also pay CrossFit an annual affiliate fee 
and helping with stuff like this should absolutely be something that they should be doing. So the Netflix content that people used to refer to were the fittest on earth documentaries because there was a time when the Every Second Counts, the Froning documentary and the 2015-2016 documentaries were all available on Netflix. I know this because I used to binge the hell out of them back in the day. I just feel like the more recent movies have been a lacking a little bit of substance and b not necessarily put out there in the same way now obviously netflix need to a be interested in actually hosting them and b i don't know if there's some sort of fee going on there that netflix charge to have access to them or something like that there's got to be some sort of reason why they were removed to begin with and why the new ones haven't been put on there and I'm not going to pretend that I know anything about that. Andrew Hiller posted a video not too long back about the new Fittest on Earth documentary. Retroactive is what it's called. That video in particular raised the question of who are these films actually made for. Discussing that question, you're better off going to that video because that is not the direction I'm going down here. It did get me thinking as I was watching that video about what was potentially missing from the more recent ones that used to be present in the 2015-2016 ones that was drawing a lot of people into CrossFit. Something else that Hiller did mention in there is that stories are important and stories are very valuable to a media consumer because stories create buy-in. CrossFit used to run Road to the Game series on YouTube, which were a part of their CrossFit Games media channel. What they serve to do by focusing on particular athletes and their journeys through the Open, through regional, and then in the lead up to the Games, you create these storylines and these buy-ins to individual athletes, which is going to help people who are not as invested already in all of this to become invested in this. It's going to draw viewership to the games, it's going to draw interest into actually doing the thing. I personally do think that the Road to the Game series should be brought back to try to create a little bit more buy-in through their media channels, which will have a nice filtering effect on the affiliates and hopefully get more people coming through the door again and saying, I saw this documentary, I saw this film. I was really interested in what you guys have got going on here, please tell me more about it. On to the general CrossFit YouTube channel, which I believe has less subscribers. I don't think this channel does a particularly good job of bringing people into CrossFit as a training methodology. Looking at this channel and the videos that it posts through the lens of somebody who isn't already balls deep in the Kool-Aid of CrossFit not massively engaging. One thing they do post every now and again is a story from a member of a particular affiliate from somewhere and these are probably the most engaging type of content that you can have to bring in potential affiliate members and to get somebody interested in what CrossFit can do for them. I honestly think that what they should be doing is looking at this channel again through the lens of that person who is potentially interested in joining an affiliate and what type of questions that person is going to have. Questions like, what is it like being a member of an affiliate? What happens if I'm not a fit person already when I start CrossFit? What can I expect from a typical class, a typical session, especially that the majority of boxes that I know don't follow CrossFit's actual programming? What kind of results can I expect to get based on my particular goals? That's the stuff they want to know. They're not that interested about the cue points of a thruster. The content and its message gets lost a little bit. The content on the CrossFit channel tends to just continuously bang the drum of CrossFit is the best training methodology in the world. We have the best coaches in the world with the best education. That's great, but how does that help someone? Honestly, I don't think people are as invested in the credentials or buy programs from fitness influencers just because they look good. The type of content that would probably work better to engage people into a potentially joining an affiliate would answer sort of questions like, how CrossFit actually works itself on an affiliate level, how CrossFit 
actually gets the results that it gets. How does a coach adapt a workout to suit somebody regardless of their ability? Yes, we can do that. It says everywhere that you don't have to be fit to start CrossFit. It's infinitely scalable. But how do we do that and why? What the purpose of scaling down is? They should be trying to engage the people who aren't yet part of the community through this channel alongside people that are already part of the community. A lot of the CrossFit YouTube channel is just blowing smoke up the ass of CrossFit, of a training methodology, without actually explaining to a potential CrossFitter what the benefits of all this are, what it could do for you, and how CrossFit provides that. Having said all this, when I was looking at the channels as I was prepping for this video, I did notice that they have started a coaching series, a series of videos that is focusing on CrossFit coaches. I do believe that this is a step in the right direction and it's definitely more engaging content. So if I was a person potentially looking to start CrossFit, that would probably convince me that this might be the right place for me. I'd love to see them trend in this direction and kind of steer away from blowing smoke up their own asses all the time. But anyway, let me know what you guys think about all of this. Is this something that you think CrossFit can be doing to help give drive affiliate memberships and to bring more people into each affiliate? Please do hit the like button and leave a comment down below because each of those things really helps the channel out. Subscribe if you haven't already and you'd like to see more content like this. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!